Welcome to my kitchen. Today we're making one of my favorite dishes. It's an asopao of chicken and shrimp. It's a true island style Caribbean jambalaya dish. The first thing that we have to do when we're making this dish is cut our chicken thighs, big ones in fourths, little ones in thirds. Our cut chicken goes into the bowl like this because we're gonna wanna season it with leaves stripped from a thyme sprig and I'm just pulling off these fresh oregano leaves. Oregano and thyme are a wonderful combination for this dish. Mix this up together. I have sliced garlic, mix that up. I have a pot preheating here. Add a little bit of oil, maybe about two tablespoons. I'll season this chicken with salt. Salt brings out natural flavors in food. It's complimentary. And all I'm gonna do is brown those chicken pieces for about four or five minutes until I get some nice color on them. The browning of the chicken gives a toasted poultry flavor to this dish. And with the garlic in there, it creates a fond on the bottom of the pan. Those are those browner sticky bits that when we put the liquid and the other vegetables here, we get scraped up. That fond is the foundation. It creates the base flavor on which this dish is predicated. While that's happening, I'll take my bacon. These little quarter inch slices will shrink into little alumet size. Put those aside. I can see that I have a fond building. Then I'm ready to take my chicken out. Look at that beautiful golden color. That's exactly what you're looking for. Next thing that we want to do, add our bacon. And I want to keep an eye on this because we don't want to take that beautiful brown fond in the bottom of that pan. And when we crisp our bacon, blacken it. And if you use a nice all natural bacon like this one, it doesn't have any water added to it. So you can actually see that this bacon is actually starting to brown almost right away. So we've got our onions, we add those. The onions are releasing their juices. A little bit of salt will make them release even more of their liquid. You can see that where I scrape it, it actually cleans that fond. And then I wanna add my peppers and give that a stir. We can move on to the next piece of this, which is our habanero. Put two incisions on it, so it's essentially slit into quarters, but you can still pull it out when it's done. So that chili goes in there now. We wanna put our tomatoes in, simply remove the core and dice. The next thing that we wanna get ready to add is our rice and our toasted coconut. This is just grated coconut that we toasted in a small pan in the oven for 15, 20 minutes. I put that into the dish once the tomatoes are simmering away. The rice will absorb some of that liquid and I wanna hear that sizzle in the pan again before I add any other ingredients. So I have some white wine. My rule of thumb for cooking with alcohol of any kind, do not use any alcohol in your cooking that you wouldn't be proud to serve your guest straight up in a glass. So the wine is absorbed. There's no fond left on the bottom of the pan. Look at that. Time to add our chicken with all its accumulated juices. I wanna season this at this point with some salt, some coarsely ground black pepper. Time to add our chicken stock. We're not cooking a rice dish, we're making a stew. And like so many other rice-based stews, think of classic risottos. They're supposed to be creamy and a little runny. You'll see what I mean when we taste the finished product. So once you see that it's starting to come back to a boil like that, lower your heat, take a nice look at it. Bring it down to the lowest part of your stove's capability and put the lid on it. After 15, 18 minutes, you can see the soupy nature of that, right? It's not rice pilaf, it's like a Creole jambalaya. This is served on every island in the Caribbean. Throw your shrimp in, throw your peas in, throw your lime juice in, fresh chili in, and give that a stir. Boop. While I'm here, and I found the habanero, I'm going to remove it. And the lid goes back on that. So I let this go for four or five minutes and then I just turned off the heat. I mean, that's a perfectly cooked shrimp, but it basically just cooked in the residual heat of that rice while we let it rest. A dish like this you need to taste before you plate it. So if you need to season it some more, you can. Perfect. It's always nice to put one perfectly cooked, curvy-worthy shrimp 
on top of each one, right? A little salt, a little fresh lime, a little bit of scallion, a little bit of cilantro. Make this dish twice according to the recipe. After that, you're on your own. Add any combinations of flavors, seasonings, meats, or seafoods. You will have a technique that will last you a lifetime.